Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Elk Grove Unified School District Virtual College Fair. We are so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools with us here today. My name is Brianna, and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can, however, use the Q&A button on your screen to type your question to our presenters at any time throughout the presentation. This is just one of um, many different sessions happening tonight, so I hope that you already learned a lot about various different schools earlier this evening. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash dash grove. I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter, UC Santa Barbara. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, so my name is Sebastian Franco. I am the admissions counselor for UCSB. Unfortunately for today, I will not be able to share my slides. My sharing uh, option for my computer is very slow, so I will not have enough time to share everything within the six minutes. So I'll just share everything with you all. Um, so the first thing I, I do point out is that within the UC system, again, we have nine different UC campuses. Obviously, Riverside is here today as well. Uh, but within the nine UCs, always check for how are we different. Basically, we're one big family, but we're all siblings within each other. So see how are we different in that sense. So look at the locations, look at the sizes, look at the majors and if they have the ones that you're looking for. Now for UCSB, we're about 26,000 students, 23,000 of them are gonna be undergrad. So what that means, you'll have a lot more opportunities to do that hands-on experience, to do that research, because we don't have enough grad students to do that work for you. Now, of course, you cannot do research without your specific majors. So we do have three different colleges within UCSB. So quickly going over each of them. So the College of Letters and Science is gonna be the one with the most amount of majors, hence the most amount of students. Now this college is not competitive, not impacted, not selective. So as long as you're admitted to UCSB, you'll automatically be placed into one of those majors. The only two exceptions are music and dance. They do have an audition beforehand, but otherwise there's no additional requirements to any of those programs. Now this college is also great for a double majoring, majoring and minoring or switching around. So if you really wanna play with your majors, this will be the, the place to do that. The second college is gonna be the College of Engineering. Now the College of Engineering is actually the smallest out of the whole UC system. So that means that you will have more opportunities to again, interact with those professors and your classmates to do that research side of things. However, this is the only college at UCSB that is selective. So this means that we do have a limit of how many students can get in here, but no additional requirements. All we have is just one recommendation and that is to get into calculus, if not pre-calc while you're in high school, that will help your chances, but again, not a requirement. Now, what's really cool about this college is that if you wanted to, you can graduate in five years with both a bachelor's and a master's degree program. So if you wanted to do both within five years, you will have that option to do so as well. Now, the third and last college is the College of Creative Studies. Now, this college is all about creating something new, something that does not exist. So if you don't see the one that you want, just get it. Um, or if you don't, uh, if it doesn't exist or if you don't see something already there, you will be able to build that in that sense. So whether it is publishing a book for the first time or um, finding the cure to cancer, whatever's the case, there will be something there for you to do that specific research, which is why we actually have a one-on-one -on -one mentorship program with another professor from the day you start till the day you graduate. So they will support you through the whole process in that sense. Now, this college is not selective, so we do not have a limit of how many students can get in here but it does have a supplemental application. So if any of you are seniors in here, just keep in mind that that supplemental application will show up after November 30th. So after you submit that UC application. So something to keep in mind as you look into that. Now going a little bit into student life, the main thing as we found out is that we do have eight different residence halls. You are not required to live on campus, not even your first year. We do have virtual tours of all of the residence halls. So if you do wanna see them, definitely do so. We know it's a little bit harder right now with COVID and everything going on to kind of check those out um, in person. Now, the other thing as well is that we do have over 500 organizations, all of them started by and for students. So if you don't see the one that you want, just get it started. All it takes is just you, three other friends, and that's it. No extra fees whatsoever. That's why we have so many and they keep on growing. But we have all the way from the academic ones to the non-academic ones, like the Harry Potter Alliance or my personal favorite, which we don't have at the moment, but we used to have a Costco club. Now making this up, we used to have a Costco club. Their whole mission and purpose was to go to Costco for free samples. So as you can tell, college students come up with great ideas. So if you don't see it, just get it going. And then last two things, one of, them going to be, one of them is going to be sports. So athletics, we are a division one institution. We have 19 different sports. Most popular is by far soccer, but what's even better, every single home game for every sport for every student, it's going to be free for students. So again, you will be able to go inside and have fun with those. Of course, we have club sports, competitive, not division one. And lastly, intramural. So you can definitely have that opportunity to uh, play with your friends if you wanted to. And the last thing I wanna point out is gonna be uh, regarding admissions. So this is gonna be the same for any UC campus, doesn't matter which one you're applying to, but no UC campus will be using the SAT or SAT towards our admissions process. So again, just keep that in mind that we're just not gonna use them, not for this year or next year either, so just in case I have any juniors. But with that, I'll put a pause and I'll add my email on the um, chat option, just in case you do have any questions, you can always feel free to email me at any time. Thanks everyone.
Thank you so much, Sebastian. And next you will hear from Cal State Monterey Bay. Hi everyone, my name is Pervy Shaw and I'm an admissions counselor at California State University, Monterey Bay. I want to apologize now, I know my video is gonna be lagging a little bit, so I just wanted to introduce myself on video, but I will be sharing my screen and I'm gonna turn my video off uh, while I'm sharing my screen just to make sure you all are still able to hear me, but I will be putting my contact information into the chat. So let's get started. All right, so we are known as the CSU with an ocean view. We are located in Monterey Bay, so we're about two hours south of San Francisco and about one hour south of San Jose. So to put it into perspective of where we're located, and also we're 45 minutes south of Santa Cruz. Oh, no. Sorry, everyone, give me just a second here. There we go. All right, so we have 25 different majors to offer to students, um, nine graduate degrees as well, well as um, teaching credentials. We are uh, considered the third most affordable CSU. We are located one mile from the beach. That's right. We The beach is about a 15 to 20 minute walk from campus. And we are known as the CSU with an ocean view uh, because of that. <laughs> we have small class sizes and our student to professor ratio is about 27 to one. So it allows for more um, personal interactions between the students and the professors. And we are considered a residential campus. So for student life on our campus, we do have 13 men and women sports teams. We're NCAA Division II. We also have intramural sports as well as sports clubs. We do have about 15 Greek organizations and we have 100 plus student clubs and organizations ranging from ethnic clubs to academic clubs, so fun clubs as well. We do offer a lot of support programs as well as different resources for our students going through their academic journey at Monterey Bay. So for fall 2022, CSUs will not be requiring SATs and ACT test scores. Again, fall 22, C for seniors who are applying for fall 22 admission, SATs and ACT test scores will be not used for our um, admissibility for fall 22. So the chart that you see here in front of you is our um, multi-factor admissions criteria specifically for Monterey Bay. Each university will have their own, but I do want to mention that the deadlines are a little different this year for the CSUs. So for Monterey Bay, our applications actually close December 15th. All CSU's applications open up this Friday, but the deadline to close the applications is different for each CSU. So definitely take a look into all of that information. Also, this information can be found on our website as well. Here is the contact information for the office. The QR code in front of you that you see here is actually for requesting for more information. So if you're interested in receiving more information about our uh, programs, as well as different events that we are going to be holding for our prospective students, definitely scan that to and submit the form so you're able to get more information. I also want to let you all know to be on the lookout for information for our preview day that's going to be happening on November 6. Thank you, everyone. And um, I will be putting my contact information into the chat. Thank you so much, Pervy. Um, next, you'll be hearing from Holy Names University. Hi, everyone. One second here while I share my screen. Okay. I have a video, so I just want to make sure that I include sound here. All right, perfect. So hi, everyone. Good evening. Thank you so much for um, participating tonight. My name is Alex Lohr. I'm an enrollment counselor at Holy Names University. Um, as an enrollment counselor, I'm here to help students 
um, learn about the university all the way from this first step of um, a prospect student all the way till the end when they when you decide to register for your classes. Um, and I will be sharing with you my contact information a little bit later on. So Holy Names University was founded in 1868 in Oakland, California by the Sisters of the Holy Names of Jesus and Mary. We are a very small liberal arts Catholic private universities. Um, our total student population is about a thousand students. So it's pretty, pretty small compared to um, UCs and CSUs. Typically our class sizes range between 10 to 35 students. We have a student to faculty ratio of eight to one. And you can see here actually from this image exactly where our campus is, right where my cursor is. Um, we sit on about 60 wooded acres in downtown Oakland. We're 15 minutes away from Berkeley and 20 minutes outside of San Francisco. So we're in a great location. Um, it's an awesome opportunity to be in Oakland because you're near lots of major companies and the tech industry. So the internship and job opportunities in the San Francisco Bay Area are plentiful. Okay, and I did wanna just share with you all a short video of our campus so you get that feel of what we're like. At Holy Names University, we pride ourselves on our tight-knit, supportive, and service-minded community. We are a small liberal arts Catholic university with a long-standing social justice mission, and we welcome students who want to make a positive impact on their communities to join us. HNU has been located in Oakland, California for over 150 years. We are a hidden gem nestled in the Oakland Hills right off of Highway 13 and minutes from Joaquin Miller Park. We are 15 minutes away from Berkeley and 20 minutes from downtown San Francisco. One of our community's favorite things about campus is our stunning views of the entire San Francisco Bay. As students at Holy Names University, you will be living, studying, and learning with both students who come from around the Bay and students who come from around the world to study here. Our Oakland location provides so many opportunities for recreation and for hands-on activities to deepen your college experience. Excellent. I hope that that provided um, a very accurate and in-person experience as much as possible of what we're like at HNU. So this is a complete list of our academic degree programs here. Our most popular degree programs are biological sciences for students interested in a medical career, uh, business, which has five different concentrations students can choose from, as well as our psychology, nursing, and kinesiology program. So many of our programs are in the health industry. And that's because our students really are service-minded individuals and they wanna make a positive impact on their communities. So at HNU, we do offer three types of scholarships. We offer a merit scholarship ranging from 16,000 to 22,000 for four years. As long as you keep your grades up, you'll receive that each year. Um, we offer a need-based scholarship, which is based on your FAFSA or DREAM Act and our talent-based scholarship, which um, is offered to many of our athletes, and that's decided on by the coach. And we are really proud to say that 100% of our traditional full-time undergraduate students do receive financial aid in some form. And I just wanted to point out, if you're interested in playing sports, um, h &U is a great option to consider because 40% of our students actually participate in a college sport, and we are an NCAA Division II school. All right, and here's my contact information. I will also be dropping in the chat um, a registration form. So if you're interested in getting in touch with me and wanna follow up later, you can definitely do that um, by filling out the form. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Uh, next we'll be hearing from the University of Missouri. Righty, good evening folks. My name is Tommy Rogers. I'm the admissions representative for the University of Missouri based down here in Orange County. I am a Mizzou alum and for the next couple of minutes I want to talk to you a little bit about the University of Missouri and why we're seeing so many folks from California coming to our beautiful campus. 
University of Missouri, large school, 30,000 total population. Undergraduate, though, sits at about 18,000. And if you look at our majors, you'll find across the board, um, our average class size is just under 30 students. We've got an 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio, which is wonderful. Tigers from all around the world, more than 110 countries. California now sits as our fourth most popular state. So we have over 200 California students on our campus, all very successful. And we're very unique in which we are the land grant for the state of Missouri, um, in addition to tier one research. So we got a lot of research that goes on both in and outside of the classroom. Um, and we are a D1 level school, SEC East as well. So it's one of a really exciting division to be a part of. University of Missouri, located in beautiful Columbia, Missouri. We're literally smack dab right in the middle of the United States. We're a college city, We've got over 125,000 folks that live in Columbia. Very popular destination uh, from a kid who grew up in California, especially Los Angeles. Um, I wanted a lot of entertainers. I wanted to make sure that there were fun things to do. Um, fortunately, on Mizzou's campus, a lot of great things. Monday through Sunday, there's always something going on either on campus or downtown. Popular destination as well um, for a lot of performers, guest speakers, comedians, folks in the academia area as well. Columbia is always thriving, and we're only about a two and two and uh, four, 45 minute uh, plane ride to uh, Columbia as well. So we're not too far away, only about two and a half hours. In terms of what we're looking for, very basic in terms of high school curriculum, you can see that on the screen here. If you're missing a credit, it's not a problem. We'll still get you into the university if you meet our other requirements. Um, and then for this year, you have two ways to apply. You can either apply with or without a test score. With the test score, ACT or SAT, whichever one you prefer to take, Mizzou will always take your highest composite score. And again, you can take it as many times as you want. 24 ACT or 1160 SAT, that gets you directly admitted into your major. You start your freshman year right in your major and that'll get you into it. And then if you're lower than those scores, not a problem. We got that sliding scale there to help you out. Um, and then for my seniors for this year and potentially moving forward, we are continuing with test optional. In lieu of a test score, you'll be evaluated on your GPA. Um, and then you'll also have two writing samples that you can submit to us. And then you will holistically be evaluated. Not a problem. Test optional students still qualify for scholarships, still directly admitted into your major. Um, and you can even still be an honor student as well. So for all my students this year, I'm coaching them individually on how to apply so that they can qualify for the maximum amount of scholarships. Let's talk majors. Mizzou, a lot of students, a lot of majors, over 300, which is quite a lot. For our popular majors for our California students, number one is going to be journalism. We have the longest running journalism program in the nation. We're also the only school in the nation that has an NBC Universal news station on our campus, KOMU. It's a global news station. Freshman year, we have plenty of students that start in that. So journalism is typically number one. Number two, business. Um, it's not impacted. It's direct admit. Um, and it actually comes with a guaranteed internship. And most of our California students will actually come back to California to do that internship. Number three is a toss up. We have a lot of students come for our pre-med, pre-law and pre-vet programs. Um, we've got a lot of students that are coming for those pre-professional tracks. We have all three on our campus. So a lot of students coming for those. Uh, and then a toss up for number four, typically engineering um, and nursing rounds up number five. But we do have some wonderful majors as well. Um, and because we're a tier one research institution, a lot of different research opportunities on our campus. Mentioned earlier, we have our KOMU station. That's our NBC station for our students. Journalism School has a lot of other resources too. We partner with ESPN. Uh, we send students uh, to their um, main headquarters every summer. We've got about five uh, for internships. Uh, we've got uh, a lot of alumni all up and down the coast too with those resources. Um, we've got hospitals on our campus. So for my pre-med students, um, for my students interested in nursing, you can start shadowing in there as early as your freshman year. Um, so we got a lot of research centers both on and off campus. Education students will get you in the classroom as early as your sophomore year. Um, so you're going to be doing a lot more outside of the classroom than inside of the classroom at the University of Missouri. Students have any questions about specific majors and what they would like to study in, um, they're more than welcome uh, to reach out to me. Um, and then finally, um, retention rating, successful career outcome. Last year with COVID, we didn't know what that would look like, but we we're really happy with this. 90% re uh, freshman retention rating, really cool. 93.4% successful career outcome. Those are students who are fully employed, attending graduate school or serving in the military with the biggest anchor being full-time job employment. And we have plenty of California students that take their, uh, their ex expertise and they come back to the state of California too. So students are going all around the world with that, but I always like to point out, we do have quite a few students who do return home to California and join the Mizzou Alumni Network. Wonderful scholarships to round out this presentation. In order to qualify for the maximum amount of scholarships, students have to get their app in by December 1st. We're rolling admission, so you can apply after that, but in order to qualify for all different types of scholarships, make sure you get your application in by December 1st. 
We do offer in-state tuition, which is awesome. Um, as an out-of-state student, I know that's very important. Uh, depending on your test scores, if you have a high ACT or SAT score, 30 or 1360 typically, you're automatically awarded in-state tuition. It's about an $18,900 uh, saving uh, for students. And then for GPA-wise, high threes, high uh, nines, 3.8, 3.9, 4.0, et cetera, too. So, um, and then we also have major scholarships, too, depending on the student's major. So business, journalism, engineering, et cetera. They all have their own scholarships. If you don't qualify for in-state tuition freshman year, not a problem. We got you covered. Um, you can go through a residency process your freshman year and starting sophomore year, you can shave off about $18,900 per year, sophomore, junior, and your senior year by going through our Missouri residency. Almost all of our California students qualify for residency um, and go through that process if they don't qualify for in-state their freshman year. And then finally, we are open for business. Come tour us, um, come uh, explore our different majors that we have on our campus. We're also still doing virtual visits as well. Um, my contact information here, that's me. I've got a beard now, but I promise that is me right there. And I've got a little more hair as well. So feel free to text me, shoot me an email, anything that I can do to make you a tiger, I'm more than happy to do that. So um, let's go ahead and round up and head back west to California and hear from UC Irvine, or excuse me, UC Riverside. Thanks folks. Thanks so much, Tommy. Um, and as we said, last but not least, we will be hearing from UC Riverside. Howdy, folks. I hope all is well. We're going to go ahead and get started here. I'm going to start the slideshow from the beginning, switch the settings here, and we're going to get started. My name is Jeremy McWells. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions here at UCR, um, and it's a pleasure to be here with you all today. We're going to talk a little bit about some general information about the university and why you need to become a Highlander. So let's start off with the idea of your experience here as a future Highlander will be unique, committed, and real. Unique in the sense that we have a very friendly and supportive campus. Um, you can feel it as soon as you come into the door, come in the doors of UCR, essentially. Our staff, our faculty members are willing to go above and beyond and make sure that you're enjoying yourself here um, on all levels at the University of California Riverside. We're also dedicated to diversity, meaning that we have uh, the resources here for our very diverse population. We are the most diverse UC in all the UC system. We also have what's called Costo Hall, not Costco like the store, but Costco Hall, which is a space dedicated to the different demographics here on campus. Committed, we have prestigious faculty. Not everybody is going to say that, but our faculty really do spend a great deal of time with our students. If it's, you know, literally I see a faculty member walking with the student on campus or office hours, they really do a, a go above and beyond and make sure that they're connecting with students. This will also lead to impactful research. We are a public research-based institution, but we also have other resources and activities such as our D1 sports. So it makes for a unique combination. And you can really start research opportunities as early as your first year. Real, we have the culture of inclusion. We're all in it together and accessibility and attainability. There's really nothing on campus that you can attain and, and take part in, including our research opportunities as well. As of today, as you can see here by the numbers, we have over 20, 6,000 students, over 1,100 faculty members. 98% uh, of those faculty members do have their PhD. Uh, 21 to one student to faculty ratio, that's gonna be more so felt in your upper division courses. And the first half of your stay at UCR will be more so the typical lecture hall experience. We have quite a large alumni uh, network here that is more than willing to connect with current students, even prospective students. And we're also one hour out from all the Southern California attractions such as Coachella and Palm Springs, LA, Pasadena, the list goes on and on. Let's spend a little bit of time talking about our majors and the colleges that hold those. We have our College of Engineering, which holds a BS plus MS degree. Essentially what that means is you will go for your four years at a fifth and be able to walk away with both your bachelor's and your master's. So it saves a ton of time. Our College of Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences is the most popular uh, college within UCR's campus. Notice I didn't say impacted. We have no impacted majors here on UCR's campus, but we do have the, our most popular majors within this particular college. The College of Natural Agricultural Sciences holds what's called our entomology degree, which is the study of insects. So if you're a STEM student looking to switch things up a little bit, that's certainly a great avenue for you. We have our Graduate School of Education, which holds our Education Society and Human Development degree, which for our students who are looking to pursue a career in education and be in a graduate setting. So that certainly could be good news for the student who falls into that category. Our School of Business has our AACSB accreditation, which only 5% of business schools have. So that puts us in, some, in a rare category there. 
Our School of Public Policy is the only undergraduate public policy program uh, in the UC, so that's something that is exciting. And our School of Medicine has a ton of incentives. Uh, most notably, we hold 24 seats for recent UCR graduates, so you do not have to be a STEM student to apply to the School of Medicine, uh, as our, their advisors will meet with you leading up to the application process, so you'll be well prepared. We talked about research a little bit, just understand that we have a transdisciplinary approach when it comes to our research. As you can see with the student at the bottom right hand corner, uh, her research was around the idea of alcohol and the impacts of ingesting alcohol during pregnancy. And that spans a few different departments like neuropsychology um, and, and psychology as well that combines different trans, uh, disciplinaries to make a transdisciplinary approach when it comes to our research. And like I said before, you don't have to wait until down the line to be a part of that research. Our university honors program is invite only, but if you have a 3.618, you are certainly in a good stance to be invited into the program. And certainly with that comes certain benefits, priority registration, uh, honors living arrangements for your living communities and also scholarships. So for more information on our honors program, for those of you who may uh, think you all will qualify, honors.ucr.edu is the place to go. For housing, this is certainly going to be an option for folks who are going to be, you know, commuting down all the way down to Southern California. We have, we're always in this space where we're improving what we have here for our students to live in. Our North District is new, brand spanking new for our current students, and Dundee, Glasgow is going to be our newest building for our incoming freshmen. Residence hall, resident halls are for French freshmen, while campus apartments are going to be for uh, upperclassmen. Uh, very quickly here, you know, there's always something to do on campus. We have over 500 student organizations. Uh, we have Greek life here, our famous concerts that have held the likes of J. Cole and Trey Songz, Lil Uzi Bird, Panic at the Disco, and even we've had Key and Peel on our campus as well. There's something here for everybody. We've talked about our ethnic and gender programs at, in Costo Hall, but also we have cultural festivals in which we work with the city. Now, don't forget to apply to FAFSA and Dream Act, our most famous uh, opportunity plan that we have here for students is our opportunity plan, which covers 100% of U, uh, UCR system-wide tuition and fees. I'm not going to spend too much time here when it comes to requirements. We all know A through G the requirements there. The GPA is a 3.0 minimum. And just understand that UCR is no longer taking the test as a part of the mandatory application process. What you need to know here in terms of a date, November 1st through 30th, is coming up quickly, y'all. Thanksgiving is almost around the corner, so make sure you submit those applications. And last but not least, if you need to contact us, admissions.ucr.edu backslash ask is going to be how you connect with us. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and kick it back over to Brianna. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Um, if all of our wonderful college colleagues can turn on their cameras, I'm going to ask them a few questions just so we can learn a little bit more about the college process tonight. So I'm gonna ask them some questions and they will answer in the same order in which they presented. Um, so the first question is, what piece of advice would you give someone currently going through the college process? Um, so to start off, I would say, definitely do not hesitate to ask the admissions counselors at each of the universities you're looking at. Doesn't matter which one. Um, one of the biggest things that I see is misconceptions or this kind of myths that are created by other students, by other individuals who you ask who are not part of the admissions process. And then they start worrying because they heard this and they don't know if it's true or not. Um, but again, they don't ask those admissions counselors. So again, doesn't matter which university, ask us those questions because we will help you with that process. We will let you know what we actually are using, what we're not using how the actual admission process works for each of our campuses. Um, so I'll say that would be the first thing is taking that initiative just to ask us those questions. I would have to say, um, to add on to what Sebastian had mentioned, uh, take a campus tour. Each and every campus is offering a campus tour, which is, whether it's virtual, in-person, or even taking a self-guided tour until you're actually physically walking through campus or taking a virtual tour, you're not going to know if you see yourself there. And you know, you want to see yourself there and be able to enjoy your journey that you're going to be going on when you attend college, because you're not only going to attend college, you're also going to want to enjoy the area around the university and see how the university feels. So that would be my advice. Yeah, those are those are really great points. Um, I would say start early with doing your research. Um, really think about what you're looking for 
in a college. So do as much research, research as you can, um, look up YouTube videos, you know, like getting in touch with your admissions counselor there. Um, really envision yourself as a student there and think, you know, what's important to me? Do I wanna be in a city location? Do I wanna be um, in a, close to home? Do I wanna be a commuter? Do I want campus? Are sports important to me? Do I wanna study abroad? Is it possible to do that at that university? So just um, try to envision yourself. I know it's hard. Um, but think about what you want your college experience to be like. Yeah, I think kind of continuing with that trend too, um, be proud and excited with the university that you do end up at. Um, coming from somebody that uh, went to a community college, took classes at UCLA, at Chapman, and at Mizzou, all wonderful institutions, so many things that you can do. So while there's different types of institutions all around the world, be excited where you're going and just know that you're going to get an awesome education. And the more that you put yourself out there, the more that you're going to get back and the more that you're going to be successful. I echo everybody's sentiments. I think the best advice I can give outside of where everyone else mentioned is to get a buddy in the admission office, right? And what I mean by that is connect with the mission representative and stick with that connection. Just because you can build a rapport with that particular person, they can you know, if you see them at an event, if it's virtual on ground, you know, you can have a connection there already. Uh, they can give you information that you may not have heard, um, if otherwise not knowing that person. So I think it's important to start the lesson of networking early on as an incoming freshman, because it is one of those life lessons that will uh, do justice throughout your time here. Awesome. The next question I have for you all is what is just one thing you want students to know about your campus? Um, there's too many things I always like to think, but I would say the sense of community, kind of uh, Furby's um, kind of comment of visiting campus if you can. I know with COVID it gets tougher, but being able to somehow see the campus's um, culture in that sense, I think that's what really makes us unique in that sense. And I think every university has its own culture in that sense. So being able to really take advantage and learn if this is the right fit for you. Um, we don't want students who don't want to really be with us in that sense. And that's perfectly fine. That's uh, We don't expect everybody to want to be at UCSB, for example. But we want to make sure that those who do come to our campus want to be there in that sense. Um, I think that's part of the reason why we create such a great uh, community and culture, um, a very supportive one. But also making sure that everybody can do what you want to do in that sense, whether it's outdoors or indoor activities, there's always something in that sense. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, another thing I can add on is that um, having a close knit campus at Monterey Bay, um, Monterey Bay is still a very young CSU. We just hit about 27 years this year. And so if um, there's a lot of history and traditions to still be made at Monterey Bay, I am an alumni of CSU Monterey Bay and um, I got to leave my footprint and so can you. If I could just pick one thing for you all to take away about Holy Names University, it would be that we are a very small school. We're only a thousand students, so we're smaller than a lot of high schools out there. Um, so if you're someone that really likes that individualized personal attention with your professors um, and you want to be in a close knit community, like our enrollment counselors really interact with the students that we brought in to campus on the daily. Um, we really take care of each other at Holy Names University. Um, we look out for each other. We're a really safe campus. Um, I think that's really ingrained in our culture um, at HNU is to just be there for one another. And that's really huge. That's something that a lot of incoming freshman students look for. Yeah, I would say at Mizzou that we, you know, we have a lot of different types of students coming from different backgrounds and, and academically as well. Um, the University of Missouri will meet you where you're at. And what I mean by that is that we've got students that are coming in with really high grades, you've done all sorts of experiences. And then we have some students who are just coming in and that, you know, they've never worked before or anything like that. That's not a problem. We'll still get you involved in your major. We'll still let you uh, utilize all of our resources and whatnot. So um, I think it's what makes campus very special is the fact that everybody's kind of on equal footing when it comes to their major, when it comes to resource opportunities, et cetera. Um, so again, when you go off to school, take risks um, and you'll definitely be rewarded for those. They're all great. Um, I would say to add to that, um, the reason to attend a UCR would probably be the work that we are doing in diversity. I think especially with these days with all the uh, topics surrounding diversity and inclusivity, I think it's important to be tied into a university that's doing the work. We are ranked number one in social mobility. We have dedicated spaces on campus when it comes to uh, representing different demographics on campus. 
Um, and we celebrate different cultures on campus all the time for our cultural festivals. So like I said, to me, if you want a whole a more holistic way of going about your learning, I think UCR is really, really good for that diversity piece. Great. The last question I have for you all is what is one myth you would like to dispel surrounding the college application process? Um, there's also a couple that I'm trying to think which one would be the best one to choose out of them. Um, I would say right now for the UCs, um, one is just the SAT and ACT that we're just not using them. Um, I've heard rumors of like, well, if I put it in, it will be better. It doesn't exist. It's just we are not going to use them. Um, so feel good about that in that sense. The other one that I usually hear is that if you don't get accepted to one UC, it's because you were accepted to another one. Um, just so you all understand, the UCs do not collaborate when it comes to admissions. I like to say we're selfish. We're looking at you for our own campus, and that is it. We do not worry about whatever else is doing. And every UC is doing the same thing. Um, so that's why don't worry about that. Just focus specifically on what you want to share with each of those campuses, regardless of which one you're applying to in that sense. Um, but again, talking in general for all the UCs, since we all, we all share the same application. Oh man, uh, myths. I can say one generally for all universities, no matter if you're private, public, or you know anything else, um, you're not in this alone. We're all here to help you. All you have to do is literally just get on the phone and call us or email us. Um, I, I can't speak for every university, but Monterey Bay will be holding virtual application workshops. So we're literally, here to help you out, even if you are, you know, you're just, you can't find any sort of help with the, even within your high school that you're in, just every college is here to help you out. Now for specifically for CSUs, I would have to say we do not require the personal statement um, at all. And so that's one of the myths, like no, CSUs do not require personal statements. And then um, like Sebastian mentioned, CSUs are not requiring SATs or ACTs either. So those are the few I would have to say. Yeah, I would echo those as well. Um, Holy Names University is not requiring SATs or ACTs. They weren't requiring it last year, this year, or the following. Um, so that is a myth that we, we do get parents that call in and ask about that. Um, as well as I do encourage students to get in touch with their admissions counselors and see um, if they can get a fee waiver for applications, because I know sometimes it's a barrier to entry to apply for colleges just because of that initial application price. So if that's something that's stopping you from applying to a college or um, you think it might not be worth it, I highly recommend that you seek out opportunities to, to get help with that if that's a barrier for you. Um, and that's about it. Um, our application this year is pretty simple. It's just a transcript and you either apply through the Common App or um, directly through our website. Yeah, I'd say that's one that we get quite a bit um, are, are students who are undecided. Uh, a lot of times students are still trying to figure out and navigate what majors that they want to select. Um, and kind of the myth is that if, if you're undecided, then that might mean that you, you, you look poorly in a university's eyes. And I, I can almost guarantee you that most universities, that's not the case. In fact, most students sometimes do come in as undecided. Um, I was a business student. I changed my majors three times. I finished my business major. I went into higher education. Now I'm in administration. So you can see that our pathways all kind of uh, navigate in different directions. So um, if you're undecided about a major, uh, that's totally okay. Um, and then I also do want to echo uh, my colleagues as well. Um, definitely use us. We want to help you. Um, to quote one of my good friends, uh, Gary, uh, Gary B, who works for University of New Mexico, we are the office of admissions, not the office of rejection. So uh, reach out to us. We want to help you. Well said. Um, I think for us, going back to the UC application as Sebastian did, I think for a big part of the application, the confusion there is um, the PIQs or the personal insight questions, right? What does one, you know, bode well for me versus the other? There's no advantage, there's no disadvantage. It really just depends on what prompt you select and what means the most to you and what you could speak on the most. I think uh, folks think that, you know, we're setting them up for failure. Uh, that's not the case at all. We are having, we have eight of those questions to, you know, also it's a part of, it's connected to the criteria, the comprehensive review, but also we want to connect with different students on where they're at, on their level. So pick one, it doesn't matter. Um, feel free to choose whichever one makes you most comfortable and, and let's hear from you. 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for sharing. I certainly learned a lot tonight, and I hope that you all listening on the line did as well. Um, thank you again for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a really quick five-question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Um, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash L-Grove. Um, thank you so much, and thank you again to all of our college representatives for all the great knowledge and information tonight. Um, I hope you all have a great evening. Good night.